Okay, so let's get started with a proper example. So I'm going to create a new project. Let's call this Hello World. Do a similar thing as we've done before. Console, don't care about this, make it an empty project. Um, so the first thing we need to do is add the include and link the library file. But it's going to get pretty annoying having to do this for every single project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a property sheet. Um, so I need to do this. So add a new property sheet. Let's call this OpenCL. Don't want to store it inside this project. I want to store it inside the solution so that all the other projects can access it. Cool. Now. Um, so the includes. Go for, I'll have to go find the OpenCL SDK installation again, which is here. Include that. So this is the same thing we've done before. Now I just need to say where to find the library file, which is in the same place. Lib. Oh, we want the x64 version, and then here I'll just do it from here for good measure. You can see how it'll lib. Okay, so that should be all we need to do. And then I'll need to uh, go to configuration manager because this is only a 32 bit platform. This will get annoying to do as well. Never mind. Um, take that. Yeah, build that. I don't build that one. Cool. I'll just leave this one a start project. So let's create a new main file. As I said before, I'll just call the um, CPP name the same as the project name and I'm just going to copy and paste a few things just to make it easy for me easier and quicker because we've already done it once don't need to do it again I'm not going to bother asserting I don't see the point uh, I can't find it I thought I added you oh no I never did add it did I oops existing property sheet add you cool just make sure it builds brilliant okay so what do we need to do is this all okay I just want to make it easy I want to make sure I'm always using the GPU so I've got my device got the platform Okay, so we need a kernel file, and I might as well just create that now. So I'm going to open the folder it's located in. So let's create a text file. Make sure it has the CL extension. And again, I'm just going to call it the same as the project. Yeah. Let's edit this. Oh, sorry, just trying to drag it across. Okay, so as I said before, it needs to have kernel before it. The double underscores are not actually strictly necessary. But all the examples I've seen use it, so I've done it. I think it just makes it more clear that this is OpenCL and the kernel. Um, again, I'm just going to call it the same. Hello world. So I'm going to pass it some ID. ID some global memory and it's a hello world example so it's gonna have to be a char array it's, it's data so what do I want to do 
I want to, well this is going to get very monotonous very quickly. I don't know a better way to do it than this. So I'm just going to access every element. Alright, so I skip through that to save you the pain and agony. So all I've done is gone from the first element or the zero index to the 14th element. And I've just spelt hello oh, no, a capital hello world with a new line character at the end. Okay. So back in here we want to load this in. So we're going to create an input stream. And I'll call this oops, hello world file. That's going to contain the name of our um, text file we just created. And it's, oops, I'm going to need to include file stream here. So that can resolve it. Okay, that worked. Now I'm going to write that into a string. That's called source. And it's going to take. There's a little trick if you don't know already. You can just take two iterators into a string, one containing the start of the uh, input file stream, and the next containing the uh, end, which is just blank. Cool. So we're going to want to load that into a OpenCL structure, which is CL program sources. And this, if IntelliSense will work, oh, I'll just go into it. Is a uh, just a vector, std vector containing pairs. It contains pairs of strings and the size of the strings. So oh, I'll give it a name. Uh, sources. So remember it's a vector, so I'm just going to say I want to put one element in there. So it takes pairs and it should be able to resolve them fine. I don't need to put any template arguments. Oh, hello, just source. Source dot. Uh, what are you working? IntelliSense. So passing the string and then the size of the string. So I just use length. Plus, we want the um, no terminating character at the end. So why aren't you working? Expression must have a class type. Okay. Oh, I always want to strap. Fucking most vexing parse piece of shit. Yeah. So, what it thought is that this looks like a function prototype. Or declaration, and then it just gets confused. So you've got to add these round uh, brackets after um, containing them. So that'll sort that out if you ever run into that problem. Okay, so now I want to create a program with this source. So I need to pass it a. What do I pass it? Uh, I need to create a context first, then pass in the source. Okay, so we're going to need to create a context. So from before, if you remember, a context just contains the physical devices. Um, so I've only got one. Um, got a lot to pass into it. Can I just pass a list of devices? Type properties. Or I can pass it device and properties. Yeah, we'll just try that. Let me do this one. Pass one device in. Okay, we'll use that. See if that works. Now I want to build this program. I'll give it a name first. I want to build it with some extra arguments. Because I want to make sure that I'm targeting OpenCL 1.2. 
sure if that's correct. Um, and it, some of these also return a CL int, which is an error code. So it can be useful sometimes when you're debugging to make sure that there are no errors or throwing out if there are, because even if this has an error and then you call something else which doesn't, then it will be overwritten and you won't know it failed. And then you'll just get some really strange results. So I'm going to create a buffer to contain the hello world uh, string that is the kernel is going to be inputting. So I now need to create the area of global memory that it's going to access, and that's done with a buffer. Let's call this membuff. I know that takes a context and then a bunch of flags. Not that one. But Where, yeah, sorry, it's the last one. So it takes a context, bunch of flags, the size of the buffer you're passing in, in bytes, and you don't need to worry about host pointer unless you're actually passing it something. We're just giving it some empty memory to say, you know, use this please. We're not giving it any information yet. You will fill, fill that in later. Now these memory flags, I could discuss them now, maybe I should. Okay, one moment. As promised, here's a list of all the buffer flags you can pass in. So I've grouped them up. The first three are the device's access availability to the memory. So if you only want the uh, device to be able to write to the buffer, then you'd pass this. If you want it to read, you'd pass this. And this is when you're passing the uh, device some memory. You can either tell it to use what's in RAM although it may copy it and cache it on the device anyway because it's faster. You can tell it to copy it and then you, on the host side you're then also freely able to modify it. Um, the bottom ones are new in OpenCL 1.2 so you may not see too many examples of them. But this is the host access to it. So if you want your calling code to be able to only write to it you can pass it this. If you don't want it to fucking touch it, then uh, you pass this. No access. So let me get out of this. Out of the way. Okay, so I want my device to be able to write to this. I don't want it to be thinking it's reading it because it's containing garbage. I haven't filled it in. Um, but on the opposite side, I want to be able to read uh, my awesome string back in that the uh, device has created. So I need to pass it uh, the size and bytes. I don't need to worry about any other arguments. So now I'll create the kernel. And the kernel no, it needs to have a program. And the name of the kernel, which I think I just called the same as the and uh, the uh, name of the OpenCL file. We'll soon find out anyway. And you can also we'll just make sure by checking any errors that come out of it. And then you also need to set each argument of the kernel. You need to pass it an uh, index value. So this is the first parameter of the kernel. I only have one anyway. And then we want to pass in the buffer. So this is the same as the global memory that it's going to access, so this is the data. So passing it 16 bytes, it's only using 14, but that's fine. Right, so we now need to send the device some commands, and you do that with a command Q. So we want to pass it the context and a device so that it can uniquely identify it. So we will we only want the kernel to be executed once, so you can do that with this handy inqtask method. And you pass the kernel. And now, so that will execute it, so now we want to read it back in. And that's with inq read buffer, which takes the memory buffer, so the global memory that it's just filled in. 
whether it's blocking. So do we want to hold execution until the buffer is finished uh, being written to? I'll say yes. Uh, is there an offset? In our case, no. I'll come back to that later. So the size of the buffer on our side. Size of buff and then the actual buffer. So this is going to read from the global memory on the device into memory on our side. So I will just see. Oh. Okay, it's because I haven't included it up here. I haven't got IO stream. I'm just going to see out this and I'm also going to wait for a character so that the command window doesn't just shut down on me oops execute that and oh yeah hello world oh, yeah, i thought mine had a exclamation mark on it it does why was it? oh whoops okay the uh indices weren't correct let's try that again Huzzah. Okay, so there's your first example. Hello world.